Mrs. Coco, what is she doing? She is watering the plants. Oh, I wonder how plants take in water and other nutrients. Do they have a circulatory system and a tiny heart pumping? No, no, Spiky. Plants have their own separate transport system, and it's quite different from the circulatory system in human beings. Plants transport food, water, and other materials with the help of their own vascular tissues or bundles. This vascular bundle is composed of xylem and phloem. These are tiny tubes running through all the parts of a plant. Xylem moves water and dissolved mineral salts from the roots to the leaves, while phloem moves food substances from the leaves where they were made to the rest of the plant. The transport of sugar from the leaves to storage areas and growing points is called translocation. Glucose, for example, moves from the leaves through the phloem sieve tubes in the stem to developing leaves, flowers, and fruits. It also moves downwards into the growing root tips. Let's take a closer look at how this happens. Phloem tubes have perforations, much like a sieve. These cross walls are called sieve plates, while the tubes are called sieve tubes. These sieve tubes transport foods such as glucose. Phloem tissues also have cells called companion cells because they grow by the side of the sieve tubes. The companion cells help in the movement of foods through the sieve tubes of the phloem. The movement of glucose through the phloem is thought to happen because of the pressure flow hypothesis. According to the pressure flow hypothesis, the glucose produced in the leaves moves into the companion cells. Glucose then enters the phloem sieve tubes and mixes with the water. The concentration of water decreases after glucose enters. The xylem tube next to it now has more water in it. This has an interesting effect. The water in the xylem enters the sieve tubes due to the difference in concentration. This raises the pressure of the liquid inside the sieve tubes and pushes the glucose solution all over the plant from storage areas to growing points like fruits. When the storage areas take up glucose from the water, the concentration of water in sieve tubes increases. Due to this concentration difference, water returns into the xylem. Do gases also mix with this water? No, Spiky. Gases have a very different way of entering the plant cells. Plants need oxygen for respiration, the process through which plants release energy. They also need carbon dioxide for photosynthesis, the process through which they prepare their own food. The movement of gases in and out of plants takes place by diffusion. Diffusion is the movement of a substance from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. Both oxygen and carbon dioxide enter in leaf plants through small openings called stomata. These are found in abundance on the lower surface of leaves. Respiration occurs all the time, while photosynthesis occurs only during the day when light is available. Plants take in carbon dioxide during the day for photosynthesis. As there is a greater concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere than inside the leaves of a plant, carbon dioxide diffuses in. The amount of carbon dioxide produced from respiration is not enough for photosynthesis, so carbon dioxide from the air diffuses into the leaves. Oxygen is produced as a result of photosynthesis. Plants produce more oxygen than they need for respiration. The extra oxygen diffuses out through the stomata during the day. At night, respiration takes place in plants, but not photosynthesis. Oxygen from the air diffuses in through the stomata of the leaves while carbon dioxide diffuses out. To summarize, plants transport materials through the xylem and phloem. The movement of food from leaves to other parts of the plant is called translocation. The movement of gases in plants occurs through stomata by diffusion.